Today we're going to pick up on arterial aneurysms, part 2 of chapter 36 on page 726. This picture shows you the most common places for that arterial aneurysms occur. It, it, as you can see, it can happen up in the upper body, not just the lower. It can happen in any artery, but these are the most common. Here a picture breaks down. Your text talks about the different types. It is a permanent localized dilation of an artery. Pathophysiology is an enlargement of segment of the artery, the tunica media, or the middle layer, where the smooth muscle and elastic tissue is located, becomes damaged. It, it's a progressive dilation leading to degeneration, and the more degeneration, the higher the risk of a rupture. The three different kinds, the saccular involves only the part of the part of the circumference where the fusiform uses uh, includes the entire circumference and the dissecting in, involves hemorrhage into the vessel wall which splits and dissects the wall causing a widening of the vessel. The diagnostic test usually it is a CT CAT scan it can include chest and abdominal x-rays um, or, or aortic arteriogram. Sometimes they've gone in with the arteriogram and actually done a, um, a repair. Well, at the same time, ultrasound is useful in determining the size, shape, location. They, it's not always treated surgically. They monitor aneurysm growth, looking for uh, symptoms, monitor, maintaining the blood pressure as low as possible to prevent dissection. Abdominal versus thoracic aortic aneurysm. Just did it to where you can compare the two. Abdominal is more common than thoracic. Thoracic is more common in the male. So you can see with the thoracic, usually there are no physical signs. The signs usually come in with pressure on an area surrounding it. It can be in the ascending, transverse, or descending. The pain for the thoracic is worse when they're supine. Risk, or men are more at risk. Hypertension, hypertensive men. Symptoms can be as simple as a hoarseness, dyspnea, cough, dysphagia. They may have back or chest pain. And I said it's the adjacent structures, such as pushing in the, in the throat. In the, um, let's see, the abdominal you see a pulsatile abdominal mass, you do not palpate the mass. Pain or tenderness in the abdomen, back or flank, depending on the location of the aneurysm. There is always that possibility of a hemorrhage and symptoms of a shock. The abdominal aortic aneurysm is most commonly below the renal arteries. The impingement of the mass can dis can extend into the renal, iliac, and mesenteric arteries. Palpating, you, you will, you can hear a pal or hear a burly. Palpate the pulsation. I mean, feel a pulsation. Do not palpate. A rupture will be a sudden, severe pain in the back or lower abdomen, and with massive blood loss, hypovolemic shock, very imminent. You can have a retroperitoneal hemorrhage. Um, which with a loss of distal pulses, abdominal distension, and they have to get into surgery and resect immediately. Some peripheral aneurysms, the symptoms would be ischemia in the limb, it can be femoral or, or popliteal, There's diminished or absent pulses. The extremity is cool or cold to the touch and painful from uh, below the aneurysm. Treatment for these is surgery. It's too dangerous to use thrombolytics. Do not palpate the mass. 
postoperatively, you're monitoring pain, pulses, bleeding, signs of infection, monitoring activity. So on in aneurysm management can be open, can be closed, can be done um, percutaneous, I mean not percutaneous, it's through a groin, semi or not an open procedure. They use different types of grafts. The text does a good job talking about the different interventions on page 727. The surgical management, um, resection or repair, uh, doing endovascular stint grafts. Post-op is going to be like as if they had an arteriogram, if they just do a, a, like a femoral puncture. Complications are that I have been in cases when we started doing the endovascular, they'll have the surgical team, the vascular surgeon, the um, what do you call it, interventional radiologist, the, sur the vascular surgical team is present, there's always the chance of having to make it an open case. You're know, looking for bleeding, aneurysm rupture, peripheral embolization, they can throw a clot during this procedure monitoring post-op for occlusion of that graft, bleeding pain, teaching, preventing um, not heavy lifting, teaching the, sign, the signs and symptoms of a rupture or change in it, abdominal fullness, back pain, chest pain, shortness of breath. Uh, what else? That should be it. And just a couple more slides, I think, on this section. We're going to go into some of these. Mm -mm -mm. Wait a minute. Let me go back. So page 728, aneurysm of the peripheral arteries, which I touched on there, not palpating the mass, the ischemia, aortic dissection, the sudden tearing pain, I told, talked about that. Morphin syndrome is a significant connective tissue disorder. Uh, young people with thoracic aneurysms, carotid and arteries, all kinds of vascular problems with morphin syndrome. And with a sudden onset of pain, if it ruptures, usually you have the pain and then they're out and, and you're dealing with shock and all kinds of things. Um, okay, so let me go to the next slide. There's different, it says other arterial health problems, it just has the table on page 36, 7. Just be familiar with these, the Berger's disease is also known as thrombo, thrombo ang, <sighs> thromboangitis obliterans, could not get it out. It's very, fairly uncommon. It's an occlusion of the arteries and veins. The distal portion of the upper and lower extremities, as you can see in the fingers and the hands being effective here, affected here. It's familial or genetic predisposition. It can be related to autoimmune disorders and often associated with tobacco smoking, just, just like um, Renaud's phenomenon, which is the next picture here and it's the next thing in your chart. It's a painful vasospasms of the arteries and arterioles aggravated by cold. It can be related to an autoimmune disorder, more common in females. Same thing on teaching them to avoid cold some, and avoid caffeine. That either one of these may be treated with vasodilating drugs such as nifedipine. When they're on these meds, you have to be very careful to avoid grapefruit and grapefruit juice. Um, what else? Also, uh, I was thinking, no, I was thinking something else. Okay, so some other things in this are your subclavian steel syndrome. 
occurs in the upper extremities as a result of subclavian artery occlusion or stenosis. Very rare. I only saw one case of that where they actually were taken into surgery because of the severe unrelenting pain that she did have to go in and do a bypass. And the vascular surgeons had been operating for years and he said it was the first true case of subclavian steel he'd actually seen. Thoracic outlet syndrome is compression of subclavian artery by rib or muscle, more common in women, often related to activities with repetitive things of moving like golfers, swimmers. It can be a result of trauma treated with physical therapy. Surgery is a, just a last resort, and I've never actually seen that surgery have to take place. Okay. And believe it or not, that is the end of part two. I will complete the chapter in part three.